Around 2006, when PFOS was restricted in firefighting foam in the EU, an industrial fire brigade replaced their old foam with another AFFF that was known to be PFOS-free. And a couple of years later they used that foam during a fire, and authorities visited the site after that incident, analyzed samples of the runoff water and said, hey, you did exceed the threshold for PFOS. And they did. It was about three times higher than the limit value. Now, the new foam concentrate itself was okay. The PFOS level in there was below the detection limit of the analysis, which was only 5 ppb. So it turned out that the fire brigade did not clean the foam tanks as thoroughly as they should have. Well, they didn't clean them at all, they just drained the foam concentrate and filled in new foam. Okay, at that time firefighters didn't really know all the details. The foam was forbidden, so they filled in a different one. And no one imagined that a few liters of foam concentrate sticking to the wall of a foam tank would cause any issues when putting in 3000 liters of new foam concentrate when it is said that the two foams are compatible. Now, PFOA is restricted and PF hexes and other PFAS will be shortly, so it is very likely that you need to replace your foam. But how do you prevent cross-contamination from the old foam concentrate to the new one? How do you clean the tanks? After that incident, a cleaning procedure was developed. Watch this video and you will know how to clean a firefighting foam tank. Some say that you cannot clean a tank that contained a triple F at all that the PFAS will stay in seals and even walls, especially if it is a fiberglass tank. So the only option would be to replace the tank or the fire engine with the tank. A lot of foam tanks were cleaned, and I think it is possible. But if you do not agree, let me know in the comments what have you done instead. Here is the cleaning procedure. First you drain the old foam concentrate from the tank, and because it contains PFAS, you dispose of that foam through high temperature incineration. In the second step, you fill in water. Use warm water because the concentrate dissolves better in warm water. About 60 degrees Celsius should do. You probably cannot fill up the tank to the top because you will get a lot of foaming and the foam would overflow and contaminate equipment outside of the tank and you don't want that to happen. By the way, do not use an anti-foam agent inside of the tank. It would help to destroy the foam, of course. But I'm not sure if this could destroy the new foam concentrate that you like to fill in after cleaning. You could use defoamer for foam outside of the tank, but you want to avoid that anyway. And of course, anti-foam agent destroys the foam, but not the PFAS. Because you can only fill in half of the tank, drive with the fire engine for about 30 minutes. The idea is that the water will slosh onto the inner wall of the tanks. You should also pump water in a loop for about 30 minutes to make sure that all pipes and the pump get clean too. Dispose of that water also through high temperature incineration. To burn water sounds stupid, but at the moment this is the go-to method for the disposal of PFAS waste. And then you use water and a very fine nozzle like this one to destroy the foam inside the tank. And you also collect that water for disposal. The third step is just the repeat of the second step. And finally, fill the tank with water, also pump it in a loop for a while, take a sample of that water and analyze it for PFAS. Your results will look like this. In red you see the PFAS levels in the old foam concentrate, and in green the ones from the water sample. You can still detect traces of PFAS in there, but the dilution factor is between 100 and 100,000, and the values are all below the applicable limit values. Now, keep in mind that this last result is that of the water which you also drain and dispose of. So the final values, once you put in the new foam concentrate, will be even lower. And if you're not happy with the result, you can always repeat step two. So if this cleaning sustainable or do some hidden residues from the old foam concentrate find their way into the new fluorine-free foam and contaminate that with PFAS? To find out, you can do another PFAS analysis of the new foam in the tanks a couple of years after the cleaning. And here is an example. All values are below the detection level, except one. It shows about 55 ppb of so-called 4H PFOS. There was only about one ppb of 4H PFOS in the last flush water sample, but that also showed about 0.8 ppb 
of PFOS and that value did not go up. So to be honest, I have no idea where this comes from. It can be a measuring error, it can be a contaminated sample, but yes, it can also be that some residues from somewhere in the tank contaminated the new fluorine-free foam to some extent. But still, even 55 ppb is relatively low and I still consider the cleaning procedure a success. Now let's talk about costs. I'll give you an example of a 2 cubic meter foam concentrate tank, which can be typical for a fire engine at an industrial fire brigade. You can then do the math for your fire engine. Disposal costs for foam concentrate through high temperature incineration is about 500 euro per cubic meter. So it's a thousand euros for our example. These costs usually range from 300 to 1000 euro per cubic meter, but I've chosen 500 for this example. Disposal costs for water are about the same and I would guess that you need about 5 cubic meters of water for a 2 cubic meter tank. Remember that you won't be able to fill up the tank to the top because otherwise the foam would overflow. So this makes 2500 euros. Then you maybe need some IBC totes, PPE or other small equipment. Let's say 1000 euros for this. This sums up to 4,500 euros for a 2 cubic meter foam tank. I think the cleaning procedure is simple enough so that every fire brigade can do it on their own, so there would be no external costs for manpower. But if you like to get a contractor to do it for you, you can assume that they need two people for 5 to 10 hours, so add maybe 20 man hours to your calculation. So I showed you a relatively simple cleaning procedure with good results. What do you think? How do you clean your tanks? Let me know in the comments. And let me know what other topics you like to see on this channel. As always, like, share and subscribe.